And now for something completely different. Today, we'll take a trip back to Japan in the 60s, and we'll explore the story of a Japanese-British woman called Emmy Jackson. Jackson's debut single, a song called Crying in a Storm, completely revolutionized the music industry in Japan, and many Japanese music historians consider this excellent track to be the first Japanese pop song. Let's begin. Me and my childhood sweetheart Emmy Jackson was born in Langsford, Essex to Japanese parents in July 1946. Not much is known about her family story, but some sources claim his parental grandfather was British. Emmy Jackson moved to Japan as a teenager to study at St. Morris Convent School in Yokohama. A few years later, in 1964, she started working as an assistant for a program on Radio Kanto, now known as Radio Japan. The radio station was looking for a bilingual assistant who could speak both English and Japanese, and Jackson got the job. Her talent as a singer was discovered by a female music critic called Reiko Yukawa, who was a regular of the radio show. Yukawa's career as a music critic started in the late 50s, writing articles about jazz for various magazines. The music critic had traveled to America a couple of times, and she was familiar with the pop music that was coming out of America and Britain at the time. In 1964, she even appeared on an episode of the American television show What's My Line? Reiko yes, Yukawa. Yes. Now, let's find out where are you from? I came from Tokyo, Japan. Oh, you live in Tokyo, in yes. the capital. Population of slightly more than 10 million. A yes. bigger city than ours. It's mm -hmm. lovely to have you here. And now, uh, Miss Yukawa, may I present our panel? The music critic heard Emmy Jackson singing while strumming a guitar and she was so impressed by her singing that she immediately advised an A&R man from Columbia Records to give her a chance as a recording artist. Reiko Yukawa insisted that Jackson should sing original songs written by Japanese songwriters in her native language of English. In fact, Yukawa herself wrote the lyrics to Jackson's first single. The music was written by songwriter Yasutoshi Nakajima. But this was the first problem they faced. Back then, Japan's recording industry was working under the so-called exclusive writers system. The exclusive writers system was a system in which record companies basically used the works of their own lyricists and composers for the recordings of their own singers. So, an exclusive singer for Columbia, for instance, could only record works by the company's exclusive writers. Therefore, Japanese singers were forbidden to release covers of hit songs written by writers who didn't have an exclusive contract with their label. The Columbia label could only escape the exclusive writer's system by releasing Jackson's song as a foreign single on their CBS imprint. So Emmy Jackson was promoted as a British singer despite the fact that she could obviously speak Japanese and the disc was recorded in Japan. Due to the fact that Crying in a Storm was released as Western music, it was priced as an imported record. Therefore, the single cost 370 yen, while Japanese pop records were usually priced at 330 yen. The single was finally released on the 20th of April 1965, and it became an enormous success, selling close to 1 million copies. Another remarkable aspect about the single is its sound. By 1964, the Beatles had already become the most popular band pretty much all over the world. In Japan, however, there was another band that was even more successful than the Beatles, The Ventures. By 1962 or 1963, most instrumental bands like The Ventures were already on the way out in the States. But when The Ventures decided to tour Japan in early 1965, the band became arguably the most popular group in the country. Their music inspired a whole generation of Japanese bands who tried to imitate their signature guitar sound, a sound which Japanese music fans referred to as tekateke. For many years, it was believed that the Smashmen, the band who backed Emmy Jackson on her first single, were a Japanese band called the Blue Comets. The Blue Comets backed Emmy Jackson on most of her singles, but according to Jackson herself, her debut single featured session musicians hired by the label. Apparently, the label had trouble finding a guitarist who could replicate the Teketeke style of the Ventures. 
but the thing that made this single truly special was the combination of heavy drums, Ventures style guitars, and Emmy Jackson's vocals, which sounded very influenced by country singers from that era. It was an unlikely combination but it certainly worked. The label succeeded in creating a hit song using a production method that bypassed the barriers of the exclusive writer's system. And CBS used the same method a year later when they released Blue Eyes by the Blue Comets. The song was also written by freelance songwriters and released by the CBS imprint for foreign artists. Other Japanese labels started doing the same. Japan Victor's Western music label released a self-penned song by the Spiders which became a hit. And Toshiba Records' Western music label did the same when a single by the Wild Ones topped the charts. All these singles became the origin of a new musical style that would later be known in Japan as GS, an acronym for group sounds. Due to the success of several freelance writers who wrote various hits for GS bands, the exclusive writer's system collapsed. It was the beginning of a new era. Crying in the Rain by Emmy Jackson was the ignition point of a major revolution that completely overturned the old-fashioned system that had dominated the record industry for many years. And Emmy Jackson also paved the way for many excellent Japanese singers from the mid to late 60s. Emmy Jackson's recording career was very brief, consisting of eight singles released in 1965 and 1966. Jackson retired from the music business in 1973, and she didn't return to music until the early 1990s. Crying in a Storm is probably the best song she ever recorded, and her other singles never reached the same kind of success, but there are other highlights to be found in her brief but interesting career. Let's explore them. This song was the A-side of Jackson's fourth single, released in February 1966. The tune features an excellent vocal by Emmy Jackson, and some great guitar sounds provided by the Blue Comet. It didn't become a big hit like Crying in a Storm, but the song appears to have been quite popular in Asia at the time. A singer from Singapore called Teresa Koo recorded a cover of the song a year later in 1967. You don't know, baby, you don't know. You don't know, baby, you don't know. Don't Break My Heart appeared as the B-side of Emmy Jackson's second single, which was released just three months after Crying in a Storm. The A-side was a rather generic pop ballad which failed to impress the record-buying public. And it was probably not what her audience expected after Crying in a Storm. This B-side, however, features many of the elements which came to define her first single. It features yet another great vocal performance by Jackson, and some excellent Ventures-style guitar by the Blue Comets. This would probably have been a better choice as the A-side of the 45. Another highlight of her brief recording career was this song called Angel Fish, released in August 1966. This was an excellent but rather odd pop number which showed Emmy Jackson moving away from the sound of her early singles. Three months after this single, Emmy Jackson released her last record. This song was Emmy Jackson's last single, 
and her only vocal in Japanese. Emmy Jackson eventually left the music business in 1973 and opened up a restaurant in Yokohama. Jackson started singing again in the 90s after raising her children, and she's been touring ever since with her band The Cadillacs. I hope you enjoyed this video and see you next time.